Hello and welcome to this very special show. It's an interview with Thomas Friedman, the New York Times columnist and also commentator. Thanks, Tom, for being on the show with us on ET Now. First off, to pick up from your book, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste, you say. Then are we at this moment somewhat wasting what we've learned from the crisis? I don't think so yet, really, Shelley, because... Um, you have to understand this you know, crisis we're in right now. Uh, this was a long time in the making. Um, this was a, a couple decades in the making. Uh, we got into some very bad habits in America in the last 20 years. We thought you could get rich by flipping houses and hamburgers um, and, and by basically borrowing money from China to give ourselves tax cuts to drive consumption at home uh, and more imports. So uh, unfortunately, to get over that kind of recession, the bad habits and the deep economic imbalances it created, that's going to take some real restructuring. Uh, Mohammed Alarian, one of our smartest economic thinkers, uh, likes to say that structural problems only have structural solutions. And right now, I, I don't see us fully undertaking that structural solution. Okay, so if structural problems have structural answers or solutions, then are our policy makers across the world playing a game of hit and trial, you think? Uh, there's a little bit. You know, none of us have really been in this before. It's the worst economic crisis um, for certainly the industrialized West since the Great Depression. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't think they've gotten everything wrong. But ultimately, it, it's very hard to tell people that we've been on a binge. Uh, we've been on a real binge and, and we need to change our habits now. Well, we've been on a real binge, as you point out, but then we've got President Barack Obama saying that, you know, things don't fall in place uh, back in a straight line, that recovery is not going to follow a straight line path, and it's a complicated, challenging process. What are we talking about here? What are we prepared for? Worse still to come? Well, you know, obviously we watch our jobless reports every week and, and every month, and we look at the GDP, GDP growth figures. Um, but, you know, I think these could bump along, you know, within a, within a, a low band for, for a long time. You are a vocal person when it comes to the economy, the politics of the country. Do you be are you beginning to feel that Obama has become a bit of a weakling in the post-crisis scenario? Oh, you know, I, I don't think you'd call him a weakling at all. I mean, he, he did quite a bit when you look at what he inherited, the, the complete mess. And when you consider the fact he's got a Republican Party that basically is trying to undermine him at every turn. You have to understand, Shelley, the biggest debate here you know, among Republicans is still whether President Obama was born in America or outer space, um, you know, whether he's an alien, uh, uh, you know, being, and, um, you know, whether he's a Christian or not. Uh, that's what we're talking about at this incredibly difficult moment. That's pretty pathetic. But is America somewhat then, Tom, changing under the skin? I mean, what are all these uh, issues reflecting? Why are they grabbing headlines? No, I, mean, I don't want to exaggerate it. Um, I, I think this country remains endlessly dynamic. I would never bet against it. But, you know, we've been on a binge in this country that I call dumb as we want to be. Dumb as we want to be since the end of the Cold War. Um, we, we have not been the serious country we need to be. And we need to get back and refocus, understand how serious this moment is. And especially since you're making such a strong statement that, you know, America needs to refocus and actually do what the country is worth rather than being on a binge. Let me take you to the economics of the American consumer. I mean, the economy has always been looked at as the consumption driven economy. Today, that consumer is pretty shy. Is the entire consumer spending story likely to be a long one before it makes a comeback? Hard to tell. You know, I, I saw the statistics the other day. I think the savings rate in America has gone from was basically zero uh, to six percent. So clearly everyone's understanding that um, we have to save more. That that's good in the sense that, um, uh, you know, it, it, it drives up bank balances. It, it you know, makes for a more you know, secure consumer, but it's bad because it means fewer exports and fewer people in the malls. Yes, malls, yes, but look at it. Even if they are saving and, yes, converting a little bit into savers, how do you reflect all of this into the banking system? You know, your banking system is really your heart. Um, uh, it's like your heart. It pumps blood to your industrial muscles. You know, we had had a heart attack. Uh, the banking system is certainly back from that heart attack. But there is now growing fear of a double dip. You know, the number of people who, you know, uh, you know, can't pay their mortgages, I think, continues to grow. And, you know, that can, can still be a problem. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about the banks, but I would underline caution three times. On that note, we're going to take a short break. We're going to be back in conversation with Thomas Friedman on this exclusive show.